everyone and welcome to BrickCats. My channel is for anyone who enjoys custom LEGO creations, likes saving money, and or those looking to get into custom building. If you're a fan of my channel or are interested in supporting what I do, please consider liking this video, subscribing, or leaving a comment. Each like, subscription, and comment helps others find my channel and I greatly appreciate it. This video is going to be a little different than normal, I'm going to go over some modifications for Thomas Jenkins Republic Gunship. I kind of think that if you're here you either are in the middle of building it yourself or have already made your decision. But check out my full review if YouTube's algorithm has sent you here and you have no context for anything that's going on right now. I also have to give special thanks to Instagram user Sam Lippincott. Most of these mods came from him or the original idea came from him, so I want to make sure that he gets most or all of the credit where appropriate. To do these mods, you will need to add extra parts as well as potentially remove parts from your wanted list if you haven't started buying already. I'm going to list what you need to buy in order to make these mods work, as well as the elements you can either eliminate or change the quantity of. These triangular assemblies in the back of the gunship go on in steps 352 and 377. I found them to be a little less sturdy than I wanted them to be, so in steps 351 and 376 I added a turntable piece to make this more sturdy. And the turntable piece goes right here in between the 3x3 plate and the 3x3 wedge. When building the cockpit in step 689, these windscreens to either side of the gunner are connected to the roller skate pieces. I actually really can't stand this connection, but it's used a lot in mocks. I found it incredibly difficult to make this connection as shown, and the problem was that the first roller skate would not stay in place when I tried to connect the second one. I added a 1x2 plate underneath the roller skates to stabilize it. Any neutral color will be okay, but I used dark red. For the small sub-assemblies in steps 798, 801, 905, and 908, instead of using a 1x1 brick and a brick modified 1x1 with stud on side as specified, I recommend using a brick modified 1x1 with studs on two sides adjacent, part 26604, and a 1x1 Technic brick with hole, part 6541, and these can be in any color. Insert one of the studs into the Technic hole with the other facing upwards. This noticeably improves the strength of the subassembly, which serves as the connection point for the angled sections above the wings on either side. And this was a really great suggestion from Sam Livingcott. For the trailing edge of the wings, I found it's a lot easier to get everything to fit together if you flip the 1x4x1 panel you put on in steps 855 and 968. This allows these angled sections of the wings in the rear to fit in much more nicely. And in the same neighborhood, these flat angled sections on top of the wings gave me a lot of problems building them, as specified in the instructions starting in steps 904 and 994. I don't think the plate modified 1x2 with two O clips, part 60470B, has enough reach to connect nicely to the 4L bar underneath it. This meant that this section was very difficult to snap in place, and when it did, it was kind of concave and not nice and flat. The general solution, again proposed by Sam, was to replace those clips with a snot brick and a tile with clip to give the connection some more clearance. I played around with this a bit and I think I arrived at a pretty good solution. These are the parts you'll need to do it on both sides. And these are the parts that you can replace if you don't, or if you haven't started collecting yet. Here are the assembly steps, pretty simple and I only use one tile with clip to make it easier to get on. The nice thing about this mod is that it allows you to fit this white slope here where you previously could not. When constructing the front end of the missile launchers in step 1015, it's difficult to know how far to slide the dishes onto the hose, and thus how much hose you need to leave out the back. I recommend leaving at least 2.5 studs worth, about 20 millimeters, but you can get away with a lot more. If you've already constructed this and don't have enough hose, it's a huge pain to try and redo everything, but you can still make the connection work by adding 1x1 one one round plates with holes, part 85861 in any color, and then connecting those um, round plates to the center of the 3x3 round brick with recessed center and axle hole in step 1013 and 1054. I found that adding the round plate with hole made this whole section a lot more stable anyway, as inserting the hose into the axle hole resulted in the entire front assembly being kind of loose. Steps 1022 and 1062 cover assembly of the tiles and oars that make the long cone at the front of the missile launchers. While I found that pretty straightforward, if technically difficult, and check out my short for my technique, I kept having problems with the tiles popping out of place, and the whole thing basically just imploding. The problem seemed to be that there was too much tension on the rubber band, which kept pushing the tiles away from the center line and caused one or two of those to lose clutch on the hollow studs of the brick modified 1x1 with studs on all sides that are towards the rear of this cone assembly. 
My solution was to replace one of the antenna bases that the flat ends of the oars rest on with a 1x1 round plate. The 1x1 round plate is slightly shorter than the antenna base, which reduces the amount of tension caused by the oars on the rubber band. The visual difference on the exterior is minimal. I can't even tell it's slightly different, and if you're really concerned about hiding it, you can put it on one of the oars on the underside of the launcher where no one's going to see it anyway. In steps 1026 and 1066, I recommend adding three L bars, part 87994, sticking out of the pins as shown. This dramatically strengthens this connection, as you can insert them into the pulleys on the rear section of the missile launchers. Those are all the mods I recommend considering for Thomas Jenkins' Republic gunship. The cost for these parts is minimal. Um, I think that I was able to get them all uh, from one store and for like $2 or something. And um, if you haven't started collecting yet, it's even better, so you, you won't even notice the difference. And I hope these help make this model a little less frustrating or more accessible, as it really is incredible sitting in my display area. If you've got additional mods or areas of concern, please leave them below in the comments. Remember to leave the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Let me know what you think about making dedicated mod videos in general. Not sure if I'll do these very often, but if you like them or don't like them, that would certainly influence my decisions in the future. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you back next time.